welcome back and this is still crossfire we've been looking at the negative effect of xenophobia to south african economic growth and some information some very very in, i mean interesting information that we quickly would like to add to what we already said before we start taking your calls um we have information that um Significantly, um, this giant telecommunications in Nigeria, uh, Nigerian business is growing while its South African one is stagnating. Latest company results shows that revenue in half year ending June 2014 grew 22% in Nigeria while it, sh it shrank 3.4% in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything seems to be in their favor. Mega retailer ShopRite, okay, we already told you that. Last year, a report revealed that just five ShopRite stores in Angola sold more cans of energy drink Red Bull than in all of 382 stores in South Africa. And 19 ShopRite stores in Angola sold more bottles of the ubiquitous sparkling wine, JC, blah, 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 compared to what they sold in the entire South Africa. And one of South African Airways' most lucrative routes per kilometer is to Angola, the Johannesburg Luanda route. And uh, I, I, I mean, and then we have a lot of information. Therefore, by antagonizing the rest of Africa with the xenophobic attack, South Africa is biting the hand of the continent that feeds it. South Africa business and their shareholders must not be happy about this. And that is why but I believe that before now, they should have you know, sprung into action because, because to it's, ensure it's sad. that... It's sad, the perpetrators of those, you know, these you know, xenophobic attacks, sorry to say they're dumb, because they really did not sit down to calculate the long-term effect of it. For example, now we, we read that, we read that you know, the South African-owned businesses in the rest part of Africa. This clearly indicates that the rest part of Africa is feeding South Africa. Of course. Now, South Africa, they have a policy. You know, young men and women who do not have jobs are being paid regular stipend by the government. Gyro. That is why most of them are lazy and do not want to work. Now imagine this. These you know, South African old businesses, after making profits and all of that, where did they bank? Where did they send their money to? They send it back home to they send it back South to Africa. Their economy, yes. To also help develop their economy. Now imagine if the rest of Africa decides to boycott their companies they would, that means they will lose. Or we their tell them to move suffer. their companies tell away from, how, from how our country. How do you expect the government of South Africa to, to also survive. throw money to survive one and to continue paying them stipends, which they use in buying weapons to attack the same people who are feeding it's very and contributing to the growth of the economy? It's very unfortunate. Pennywise, pound foolish. You know, it's very That's unfortunate. That's how I see it. The, anyway, uh, let's look at, uh, I mean, let's broaden, uh, you know, this, um, the horizon of the economic downturn that this may eventually have on South Africa. And one of it that is going to stifle the growth of local companies in their effort to expand into other African countries. Can't you see? Don't you see sure. this? The larger picture is just that if this continues and something is not done to permanently put it to rest and never to raise its ugly head again, a lot of countries may not open their doors to South Africa. I mean, I mean, organization. I mean, countries. I mean, you know, For open European their doors countries. exactly to come and do mm -hmm. to, to come Business. and make major investment. Very true. I mean, it is so unfortunate that you expect that South Africa. They. I mean, a lot of Nigerians still go to university in South Africa. How Not many South them. Africans are coming to do their university education in Nigeria? No, no, no. If, if it's you, on, if do it's you on, understand? If it's on that. Panels, let's let's not go there. Now, what I'm even saying is that the reason why that's there, happening there is, is a proper, proper, <laughs> I mean, that's supposedly bilateral relationship, the type that you that should encourage True. businesses, a robust relationship that will translate into economic growth, you know, uh, and vice versa. But the situation here is that they are sending a very, a totally wrong signal to a lot of other companies that probably a wants to expand mine, into it's South a, Africa. A South African friend of mine called me yesterday evening, and that was, I was really not happy because while we're trying to speak and talk about the whole activities, she's married to a Nigerian, mm. but they are in South Africa. And she was like, ah, that Ishama, look at what's going on. And, but then the network was so poor that we couldn't really you know, complete oh. our discussion. She's completely against it. She's one of the media personalities there. She is completely against it. Why? Because she knows that she has a lot to benefit from foreigners. She comes to Nigeria. She does her movie. She shoots movies. She comes there. She does businesses. She, she's married to a Nigerian, a foreigner. Mm. 
she knows that if she has stayed back in her country to get married probably to a South African or do businesses alone, her life would probably not have been where it is today. So it's she's very, one of those few really, individuals really, really who sad, appreciate Shoma. foreigners. Now, according to a report that we got, more South African companies are either already expanding or considering expansion of their business operation across Africa. Now, that is going to be difficult. I mean, because <laughs> very do difficult. you think, I mean, look at it very well. We don't have the record of the number of Nigerians that, that has been grossly affected. Maybe no life has been lost, but a lot of business investment has been... See shops that have been looted, and you see police officers, three, South African police, plus. taking a walk. You understand? They even, Encourage, they aided. let Some of them these people aided. to largesse. Exactly. And all of that. So look at the, the adverse effect is such that a lot of opportunities, business opportunities, and I mean, the type that would benefit their own, uh, I mean, that would benefit South Africa, all of these things are being jeopardized by this singular action of, of, of just going about without really considering the effect of this action. Imagine if all countries of the world who, who have business concern in South Africa decide to withdraw their investment. I mean, just imagine it, just, just picture it. Sometimes I think such actions are necessary to serve as a lesson, future lesson, hmm. to such perpetrators. So before you carry out any act, you will have learned from the past the experiences. You will consider because the relationship, I want, you will consider I, I the investment. I strongly believe yeah. South Africa, they, probably the, the government, they like this, because this is something that has been reoccurring in the past. And they did not do anything valid to put a permanent stop to it. I want to believe the South African government, they like this. I mean, because I don't know. I, I don't else, want to. How else? I don't want to totally agree. No, but, how, how? But how? But you know, Jacob how Zuma. Else, how else can uh, one Jacob see Zuma this? came out. You know, it's to strongly, to strongly in condemn January, the action. You did not do anything. The police are not doing their work effectively now. All right, now. Shoma. Hold on, on your thoughts. Let's take this call. Austino. Good morning. Uh, uh, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, sir. How are you all? Very Fine, well. Thank you. I will bless God. Thank you. Go ahead, please, make I, your contribution. I, I really want to contribute on what is happening in South Africa. All right, please go ahead. You see, it is good for it to happen. Hmm. All in the sense for we, for our Nigerian leaders to know what to do. Hmm. South Africa is the country that Nigeria invested all their power and their might during the time of our appetite. Hmm. Nigeria hmm. wasted money, did everything. Even our Nigerian musicians like Sonokosi, hmm. they all use music to fight the blue whites. Them mm. to fight Margaret Thatcher, Roland Reagan, for them to free blacks, including other African countries. Mm. It just this South Africa is just the beginning. It may soon happen to other African countries, which Nigeria have helped. What is used is supposed to use to invest, establish, expand companies for our youth. Those people that go have gone out to look for green pasture. Will not have that mind to go out. Just like I don't have Nigerian passport, I don't even be prepared to go outside. I know that God will bless me in this country. Hmm. If by the time all this money that I've been given, like last time we were doing eight years ago, Nigerian government gave God, uh, Ghana government for twenty million dollars for what? Giving that my principal for twenty million dollars. We are for our Christmas. Look at our own country. Look at our own nation. Our people have been massacred everywhere. Look at the ones that was going to Italy through Mediterranean Sea. They were kids. Let our leaders learn lessons from this. And right. invest much. This new government, let them invest much. We have many ways, many things. Indians are also suffering this country. Look at our young still. I'm sorry, Mr. Banji, don't get me wrong. There is a, a business that is going on in Nigeria here. I don't see all these are rubbish junks. People gather it, send to Indians, they establish. Hmm. A comp an Indian company will come here under one year. They have many companies through this business, I'm telling you. I will tell you, even tell you that that business is the next to crude oil, which all our intention, our minds are on. But hmm. Indians, other companies are suffering not. In Nigeria here, you, you have, have made Nigerians to be slaves. Indirectly, ask me why. All right. Most of our people are casual workers. Hmm. No more um, uh, management staff anymore. If they have 1,000 staff, they will only give 80 to 150. Hmm. 
management staff. The other ones will be casual workers. Pay, they will, you work, they pay, you go. No treatment, no, no benefit. No position, no medical, no medical. No medical, no nothing. nothing. If, you, if you are injured, you're on your own. Hmm. Please let our Nigerian resident re re refine Nigeria truly. All Let right. them refine Nigeria truly. Please. Thank you very much, Ustaino. Thank you, sir. I mean, very insightful comments and contribution that you, you brought to, to, to the show. Now, the killing of fellow Africans, you know, to protect alleged economic precariousness, you know, of, in South Africa and South Africans feeling that people are, are, are in their country to take their job, not, not knowing that they're not doing the job in the first place anyway, you know. But more, more importantly, let, let's look at another very key, you know, thing that this is going to affect. We also have it that foreign multinational companies seeking to invest in Africa are more likely to use South Africa as a base to explore business opportunities in other African countries, hoping that it is stable, I mean, and when we talk about stable, I mean, we're not talking about stability in terms of uh, xenophobic, uh, you know, activities. But we're yeah, talking about they have roads, they have electricity, they have water. You know, they have infrastructure that can make them live, you know, well. And um, as a matter of fact, I mean, South Africa to Nigeria is just a, a big maximum six hours flight, and you are already where you're going. You understand? So, I mean, for for other foreign multinationals thinking that okay, let's use South Africa as a base, and then we can extend our tentacles into other African countries okay, like right. Ghana, like Nigeria, and all of that. Nigeria seems to have weak laws. We have weak laws. We have weak policies. Because, these are of, policies, because of the terrible governments we've had in the past. You know, because these are policies that people... Okay, what are the conditions for you coming into Nigeria to start a business? Except you want to buy a very huge place from government. Nobody asks you a question. Go, go to Ikorudu town. They buy expanse of land and they open and, and they start their business. Nobody is querying them. It is after they must have started, one local government will come and meet them that they have to be paying something, 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 and all of that. Let's take this all the call. Good morning, Alex. Hello, Good Alex. Man. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Dr. Shoma. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this post, apartheid apathy, directed at black, is rather very, very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Uh, I read Mahatma Gandhi, the story of my experiment with food. These were issues the Indians, the Pakistanis, and other common race suffered in the hands of the Africana, the white minority ruling them, in their commercial drive up prospecting in South Africa. So, other Africans, so even later, the world, have supported black Africa to black majority rule, and they, in turn, are turning against Africa, which is very, very bad. You see, I'm listening to your program here, the partnership between NTA and the Indian Tatar and Sorita. Yeah. It is coming via more choice of their good TV. Mm -hmm. I will not be a part of it. That is, at my own level, I'm already protesting the case of African interest. So I expect Nigerians of goodwill. Who we'll want our nationalistic growth here? I mean, we we'll start with the focus on African economy and every of your investment. I will be the last thing for you to use MTN. It's a South African based company. Because Nigeria has South Africa to fight for black majority. And I know the treatment, the business method of regular leaders of this time. Very important example. Mm -hmm. As it dignified as our president. Good Lord Jonathan, he was not even allowed to make a great life oration when Dr. Nazim Mandela passed on. You know, which is very, very bad. The whole role is Nigeria playing. Mm. Well, we are not appreciated. However, as you say in Europe land, if the Africa rejects you, come back home. You come back, come back home. Happily, I start right there. So what I'm saying in other words, with the issue of SDC, a new dawn has finally come to Nigeria. All South Africa, I mean, all Nigerians in South Africa should come back home and let us get to develop our country. And with that, these people who have passed that task, they are suffering from what Dr. Carl Jung, in his psychology of subconscious, titled primitive, you know, uh, primitive disposition. So 
the people who that they will come back home. They must not lose their life. According to Obama, they will lose. Their life is lost. Everything is lost. Hmm. But they still have their life. I mean, hmm. that was there. If you are treated as a target, come back home. And the both spirit is always there. Start all over again. So this is my thing to tell all Nigerians living in South Africa. That is my thing, therefore. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Alex. Thumbs, Thank you thumbs, so much. thumbs up to you, Alex, for very, very insightful, insightful, deep. insightful comments very and all of that. Kind of we'll go on a short break now. And then when we come back, we'll take more calls and then we'll throw more light on the issue on the discussion. The economic effect, the adverse effect of xenophobic attack on the uh, growth and the situation in South Africa. That's what we've been looking at. We'll be right back. This is still Crossfire, and we'll be looking at the negative effects of xenophobia to South African economic growth. Obviously, a lot of trappings are having it that whatever has happened in South Africa in the last one week would definitely take a downturn on the economy. And we'll be looking at factors that are likely, likely going to, I mean, be responsible for this um, to be noticeable in the growth of their economy in South Africa. Now, we, we talked about the growth of local companies in their effort to expand into their other African countries to be affected. We have a report that South African companies are either already expanding or considering expansion of their businesses operations across Africa, which may be difficult. The report also states that foreign multinational companies seeking to invest in Africa are most likely, you know, uh, planning to use South Africa as a base to explore business opportunities in other African countries, and that already is being impaired. Um, this recent attack are threatening to undo the repair done after similar attack in 2008 and have the potential of further lowering foreign invest investor confidence, not only in relation to South Africa, but the continent as a whole. Very so true. this is not only going to, I mean, it will now be seen that South if South Africa that is, sub, that is seen in this, I mean, put in this particular level in Africa can accommodate this, then which country in Africa is safe? <laughs> And so the, 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 the effect error. of it is not just going to be on South Africa alone. It's going to affect the relationship of, you know, um, Asia, um, um, the Euro European Union, and all that, you know, continent relating with Africa. It will become, okay, they are not stable. They are barbaric. How can the, they just the wake up one day and, and start and killing you, each other? Looking forward to having getting a visa from your dream European country. The next thing you remember what happened. The see the, the mental picture of how a black attacking a black. I mean, see the see the signal and the, so, the back so signal terrible. Boko Haram has sent to a lot of countries. Uh, I mean, and a lot of continents, particularly in the last six years. And then see what is happening in South Africa. So if you are not in Nigeria and you are not in South Africa, which other country in Africa do you really want to go to excel? I mean, a big question. Nigeria. We have a new <laughs> Anyway, we have a new government, government and we're trusting that things, I mean, will we bounce back and better. Nigerians, we want to come back home to even enjoy, you know, their country. Now, another very big one is tourism. People who naturally just want to take vacation. The very first time I visited South Africa, it was on vacation. And I had a nice time. I was in Joburg, and then from Joburg, we went to Pretoria. And I mean, I had a nice time. I enjoyed myself. If I came back telling people South Africa is a place to be, but with all of this happening, who will want to take the risk of taking his entire family on, on a vacation now to South Africa? Do you know what, Mr. Zappo? Yeah. Only a wise nation will take advantage of this current situation in South Africa. They will take advantage of it and develop their nation. Can you remember when this Ghana must go, you know, yeah, incident yeah. happened? Ghana went back to the drawing board. Look at Ghana today. And Ghana worked, is a nation them. in Africa to reckon with. Why? Because we threw them out. But did they sit and cry? No, they went back and built from it. Now look, we in Nigeria, we send our children to Ghana to school. But the, sig the significant thing to note and about, yes, we chase them about away. us when we chase them away, we didn't kill them. Of course. If we did not, not, the relationship them. we have right now would not be strange. there. We, we send them out. Ghana must go. That, I mean, that was what but gave back in to as the much as, in, as much as we, yeah. in as much as we did not kill them then, but still, they, they suffered it economically also. Even there are some of the you know, citizens who were, that were in Nigeria that had jobs. Do you they know car, car, all jobs this car wash business were established by Ghanaians? 
sh cobblers, those people who go around, around. you know, who but polish you, but shoes look at and them all of today. that. But, not, look, but look at them, it's, it's, they are all doing well. Done they have a lot, of, lot, they have now, a lot of manufacturing industries there. The educational sector is amazing. The agricultural sector is booming also. Gold Waste and management, the, the truck pushers, oh, before they were pushed out, they were, they were, they were established. But are now, people are still but benefiting now, from it today? But now, look at where Ghana is today. That's what I'm calling on the, you know, the African well. I don't know if I can African still, Union. No, not even Africa. Well, the Nigerian government, the current and soon, you know, soon coming in. Have you heard government anything on the break from back. the presidency on this matter? You and I have been checking the newspapers. We haven't seen anything. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. I don't, I don't understand you. There is we God. There is God, though. No, anything. I mean, yeah, our president. It is the president elect. Activities. It's actually the president elect. But he has elect. not been sworn in. Yeah, I know. That made statement. But he has not been sworn in. So you don't expect him to begin to work magic. No. <laughs> no. Come anyway, on. Uh, for but me still, and for you, seriously. Still, this, is, this is a national issue. In an attack to a Nigerian outside the country or mm. in the country is an attack to all of us. Yes. So we must not be silent on this. We shouldn't wait for the president to come out and speak up against it. We all on our own should be able to be our brother's keeper and say no to these barbaric activities. We will do everything we can to protect our own, protect now, our let, investment, let, let, let and me protect quickly our ask people. You, let me quickly ask you this question. Now, um, you know shortly before the governorship elections, we have the Oba of Lagos coming to make a very public inflammatory statement, very insight, I mean, very, very, uh, I mean, I mean uh, unexpected of, of a first-class Oba, you know, like Oba, really want uh, you know, uh, really want to But the thing is, we have another king in South Africa, a first-class Oba, the type that people really relate with. It's, it's even calling, he's supposed to head a conference, He's supposed to, I mean, he will be heading the conference, I think, next Monday to talk to all the local indigents, explaining to them, you know, what, what is not and what, what it is, you know, and all of that and stuff. The damage. But look, the truth is, look at, look at this wisdom report. is key. Whether or not an individual is a it's traditional looking. leader. Look at, look at the Emir of Kanu. Do you think he will come out to make such statements? All right, let's no, take, because he's educated. All right, let's take, let's take Efe. Good morning, Efe. Yeah, good morning. Hello, Efe, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, you're alive. Go ahead and make your comment. Yeah, money. Money, Nefi. Yeah. Yeah, how Go. is everything? Very well, Very thank good. God. Thank Go you. ahead. Yeah. I want to comment on um, this uh, Sanofobia issue. Okay. Yeah, so the issue is... The, the issue is, if you look around the world, all over the world, there's no country, even uh, US or UK, there's no country that you won't find any of their member outside the country. So it's natural for each and every country member to go outside of the country. So why is it that within Africa, yeah, just South Africa, yeah, will be chasing people, hurting Nigeria? This, this thing is hurtful. I don't find anything good in that. All right. I mean, that's exactly what a lot of people feel. Nobody feels anything good, you know, about this. Uh, people have been attacked. Africans have been killed in South Africa. They have been doing their legitimate businesses. They've been looted. Many of their companies and their houses have been burnt. I mean, we don't even have record. I said yesterday when we heard that this is still continuing. Maybe they are hiding dead bodies. Who knows? But we have records that all, about six people are, you know, are already dead uh, and all of that. But I mean, seriously, seriously, like I was, I was asking, what is Nigerian government doing about this? I heard as at yesterday, um, Abike Dabiri said, okay, Nigerians will be brought back into the country. Is that about will be? When? What move have they made? <laughs> uh, we're trying because to see. Because every second, every we, second. We, we need updates. Every we need update. second that, is, that we, we are allowed to go by, a life could have been lost within that one second. You know, but, but, for, but for the funny thing, the interesting thing is that we, we, we haven't, by now, we should have heard from government the way forward. Nigerians are coming back home. 200 Nigerians have been brought back to Nigeria. 
uh, probably you will you will give them. Uh, I mean, you are planning to say, okay, don't worry about your investment. We will capture it and, and probably estimate it and, and make you you know give you a soft landing back home. But I mean, you, we have not even heard anything. So even if we, we are blaming when, when South Nigeria African government so for not covering, you know, the that? xenophobic activity, what is Nigerian government actually doing to cushion the effect of Nigerians that have been affected? Mm, the new government will do that. Anyway, um, we, 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 can, we can stay here and keep talking and not being able to, to have a lot of answers, you know, to so many questions in our hearts. But we know definitely from all that we have seen that the xenophobic attack that is spreading in South Africa definitely is taking a very negative, you know, uh, downturn on the economic, on the economy and the economic growth of South Africa. So they are going to feel the immediate effect of it, and eventually going forward, because it's going to break a lot, a lot of trust that many other continents have, not only in South Africa, but for even the rest in, of that. I mean, for the rest of the continent. We want to say a very big thank you for being a part of our show today. This is how far we can, we can go. So join us tomorrow again for another very interesting episode of Crossfire with Dapo and Ishoma. Do stay out of trouble. And say no to violence. God bless you. Bye. <laughs>